If you're not yet familiar with the North Carolina Charlotte football program, well, don't feel left out. In fact, uh, this is a program that has not existed for very long. Um, they've only been playing college football for four years, and they've only been a part of an FBS conference for the last two. That's Conference USA. In 2015, it was very shaky because they only won two games overall that year, and they didn't win any conference games. But last year, they saw notable improvement with a four-win total, and three of those wins were in conference play. As you can tell by the bottom of the screen, none of those wins were at home. Now, entering this year, you would think, okay, they're going to continue to improve, right? But look at it on paper. You look at what they lost. I tell you, if they, if they win four games this year, it's going to be an improvement, not in terms of the win total, but just in terms of the overall makeup of the team because, like I said, they lost a lot of production. Uh, looking at the quarterback, though, they do return him, Hassan Clue, a junior. Um, a year ago, his TD to interception ratio was good. I mean, 10 TDs, only three picks. Got to improve on the completion percentage, though, because um, he only completed 53% of his passes. But his QB rating was at 116. And he was also a contributor on the ground when he had to run 426 yards and eight touchdowns. So 18 touchdowns is what Hassan Clue um, accumulated. Um, the ground game, though, takes a bit of a hit because you lose Khalif Phillips, who was flirting with 1,000 yards last year. He's gone, and you lose your main threat wide receiver um, in Austin Duke. So beginning with the run game, I think Robert Washington will get the bulk of the carries close to 500 yards last year. Did average five yards per carry, so that's something. As far as the wide receivers, we mentioned the loss of Duke. Um, he was um, over 800 yards in receiving a year ago. So now you have to rely on other guys to try to pick up the slack. T.O. Ford, uh, the second, a senior, um, had 36 catches a year ago and 450 yards in receiving yardage. And Mark Quattlebaum for UNC Charlotte, a redshirt junior, did play in six games last year. So a little bit of experience there. Offensive line, uh, we'll see if uh, they can do a better job. Three of the five come back, and that does include uh, Chris Brown and Eugene German, the tackles, both seniors. Uh, last year, the ground game uh, was actually decent, 176 yards on the ground per game. But the passing offense, uh, there wasn't much there. Okay, You could tell that they really relied on the ground game quite a bit. Uh, passing game was only 192 yards per game, which was 98th in the country. UNC Charlotte will also have to improve upon their points per game average. They only scored 25 per contest in 2016. Now, defensively, um, rush defense didn't look too bad last year for UNC Charlotte. Big reason why uh, they improved on that win total. You know, they only gave up 143 yards on the ground per game. Bad news, though, is that you lose two-thirds of that production in that 3-4 alignment. Um, you do get back Nick Carroll, who played every game last year, started in 11 of them, and had 22 tackles. But uh, the other guys have to be replaced. Linebackers, uh, two of the four return, including um, Carrington King, 73 tackles a year ago, and Tyreek Harris at the outside linebacker, he returns too. We mentioned that UNC Charlotte was good last year as far as rush defense. They were also good too in turnover margin, plus seven. But where they really stunk up the joint was pass defense, giving up over 300 yards per game. That was fifth worst in the country, 309 to be more precise. And even worse news uh, you lost the corners. Man, you can say that's worse news because you need experience. On the other hand, maybe they need new blood at the corners. So they are bringing in Marquavis Gibbs, um, a sophomore who previously played uh, junior college ball in uh, Coffeyville, Kansas. And the safeties, lots of experience there, so that makes up for it a little bit. Ed Roll uh, played all 12 games last year, started in eight, and was productive um, last year um, with 49 tackles and three picks. And the other safety in uh, Ben DeLuca, um, didn't do too bad at all his freshman year. Bigger things are expected for him. He's already getting some preseason um, Conference USA honors. Looking at the schedule for UNC Charlotte, well, the opener, this can go either way. Eastern Michigan may be the worst team in the Mid-American Conference, but you play them on the road. That's a Friday night game. And then uh, second game of the season, uh, we'll see how it pans out for the 49ers because you go to Kansas State. I don't think it's going to pan out too well. And then the home opener at last, North Carolina A&T, a great shot of the win there on September the 16th. And then you can see the October schedule. Um, yeah, a couple shots of the win, Marshall and UAB, but sandwiched in between. Western Kentucky, you're not going to win that one. And then November, a rough three-game stretch at Old Dominion and Middle Tennessee the following week, and that's Southern Miss. 
I would be shocked if uh, the 49ers won any of those three games. But maybe a, shot at a victory at the end against Lane Kiffin's Florida Atlantic team on November the 25th. And you can see the Las Vegas projection for UNC Charlotte. It's not very high, and I don't have UNC Charlotte finishing with a high win total. Three wins. That's one less than what they had from the year before. Even though it's a program that's trying to make progress, they simply lost too much on offense, and you lose your leading returning tackler on defense to uh, make matters worse. I think UNC Charlotte's going to have a difficult time trying to get out of the cellar in the Conference USA Eastern Division. That's my look at UNC Charlotte. See you next time.